Hedge Cursus is an enormous rectangular earthwork defined by a bank and ditch about 1.7 miles in length and runs on the left hand side parallel with the road you're traveling on. On this left side of the bus, you should be able to see some low grass mounds in the field. These are the Cursus Mounds, a group of 19 early Bronze Age burial mounds, which were built a few hundred years after construction of the stone. trees here that blew over or they raised pine posts. If they raised pine posts here this is the very first evidence really of any kind of monument building that we have because this is from the moment we became an island. Anything that happened on this land prior to the Ice Age was destroyed by the glaciers. So that is the earliest evidence of anything like this. 10,000. Yeah, yeah. So it's important. Yeah, yeah, because Stonehenge was significantly older to Jesus and Julius than they are to us. So when we're thinking about this timeline back, we've got Stonehenge and today, Jesus and Julius are about there. That is where it's where Michelle is, right? <laughs> you know, it, it so, was as old. So this is where we are, this is where Jesus is, and that's where Stonehenge is? Well, yes, yes, yeah. That, exactly, perfect. But those posts are double that. But exactly, so this would have been as old to the people who built Stonehenge as they are to us. Right. And the reason I say this is just to try and get across, you know, the, the length of time that this land we are standing on now has been spiritually significant to the people of this country. You know, this is a deeply spiritual, magical, mystical place. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's been like that, yeah, for a bloody long time. Uh, now, I make it 11.40. Uh, an hour and ten minutes is more than enough time to do a 30-minute lap of the stones and then take the shuttle bus back from here and get back up to the bus. But I'm going to give you one hour and 15 minutes. So... Very important, can we meet back at our minibus at five minutes before one? Okay, 12.55, yeah, yep. five Genius. before one. Um, that gives you plenty of time to explore. Now, expectation management, sometimes people look at it for the first time and they say to me, hmm, Johnny, that's not as big as I hoped it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> They're disappointed at the size. Having only seen it in pictures with nothing to reference the scale, that just gets I'm worse. I'm guessing what it is yeah. in my head already. Yeah. Well, <laughs> 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 no, just close your eyes and keep it. <laughs> if that's you, just remember how old, how heavy, how far. How heavy. Some people say half of it's missing, I say half of it's left. Okay? <laughs> Particularly when you consider, uh, you know, independent traders used to sit where these coaches are. They used to sell you a hammer and chisel to take a little piece of the stone home with you. Really? Right? That's why we don't walk through it. The final thing, we don't walk through it. But I have a surprise. Today, though, honey. I have a surprise. Because <laughs> if you guys are punctual, we can swing by another stone circle after we've been to our secret place. Ooh. Another stone circle called Avebury Henge. And there's no visitor centre, there's no cordon. You just walk in, you touch the stones, you get right oh, up there. Oh, They're yeah. just stones in a field. So we're going to try and squeeze in two secret places today. Uh, we're going to go to the village of Laycock and then we'll have flashlights when it's dark. We'll go and just get all wavy and pagan in the stone circle. <laughs> awesome. uh, right, so five before one. If you want to spend your time here by yourself, do it. Uh, the other reason we're down here, my generation developed more dexterous thumbs for video games consoles. The younger ones today, you guys are evolving really long arms for selfies. Um, because I'm here, uh, and Jojo's here, you don't need to do that. Uh, so the best place for a picture is the far left corner. Okay? So I will be down there for a bit. They are a little bit taller than me, 
Um, oh, I'm actually quite short, despite what I think in my mind's eye. Um, so, uh, just a few things on this display board. This is a map of the overall landscape. We drove past Durrington Walls and Woodhenge on our way here. Um, you can see these parallel lines. They were parallel lines of wooden posts that took you from the settlement to the River Avon. That points in the direction of the sunrise at the start of the shortest day. Wiggly way along the River Avon, you come along an avenue, partly man-made, partly that natural geological feature, remember I said, scraped into the ground by the glaciers dragging stones, uh, partly natural, and then man-made again to here, into Stonehenge, facing the direction of the winter solstice, okay, the sunset. So we've got a sunrise and a sunset alignment of the land of the living and the land of the dead, and connecting the two is the River Avon. Now this avenue, parallel lines of trenches, like this and we can actually see part of this when we get down to Stonehenge so I will point that out for those of you who are with me down there uh, and that's where I tend to do a bit more of a presentation um, when you walk into Stonehenge along this avenue from the land of the living you walk into it in this direction so the structure we're going to see is an outer circle of sarsen stones we call these the megaliths and the megaliths the lintels are touching you see how the lintels connect front to back. Inside that we have the circle of blue stones. Now the blue stones look the same as the sarsen stones because they've all weathered the same, but they're actually geologically very, very different. They're igneous, not uh, sedimentary for starters. Then we have a semicircle arrangement of sarsen stones. We call these the trilithons because tri three, lith and stone, individual groups of three. See the lintels, there's a gap unlike the megaliths. And then the semicircle of blue stones. You come in facing the great trilithon, which has fallen but that's the winter solstice alignment that I'll talk about when we're down there. Final thing, yes, go for it. I was so close to one of my guests, but I thought it was a circle. Well, it is a circle and then no, a semicircle. I thought it was like a. Oh, okay. Oh, U shape. Ah, uh, well, you know, it can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> uh, it's the great thing with this site. It might have been like that before. They might have moved it, and I wouldn't be able to prove you wrong. Anything you say to me about Stonehenge, unless you're telling me it's over there and it's made of stone, anything you say to me, I can't prove you wrong. You could say whatever you like. Um, now, this is the rectangular ditch called the Stonehenge Cursus. This was built five and a half thousand years ago. It runs through the trees. These trees were planted in the mid 1800s and we discovered this, so they left the gap. Uh, it runs from here to the corner over here. It's about 2,000 meters long. It's really significant because when they wanted to choose the exact place they're gonna place Stonehenge, they looked at the movement of the sun on the shortest night of the year and they placed it so that the sun sets there and rises there over either end of the Cursus Monument on the shortest night of the year. So the summer solstice was used to locate the centre of Stonehenge in relation to the Stonehenge Cursus. But actually, everything we celebrate at Stonehenge now should be focused on the winter solstice. Anyway, let's go down and actually see it. That display board often gets overlooked because everybody's just so... Turn to the solstice. Come on, my dear. So what I'd recommend is doing a Men of Salt right Orlando. Come on, yes. Tennis Master, 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 yes. Tennis <laughs> See, this comes. Uh, you couldn't be well on a day like this. Cold makes me nipple. I'm well but uncomfortable at the moment. I'm going to make this one just a bit of a slip. I'm going to do it or not. I used to run marathons back in my health. I'm going to go to Stonehenge don't have foundations, they don't go under the ground, the big stones are resting on the ground, the whole thing is pinned together with mortise and tenon joints, okay? Those outer lintels connect front to back with tongue and groove joints. And those outer lintels, they're not neat oblongs that are approximating a circle. They are curved sections of a circle. 
and those sections that we still have are curved to a tolerance of just an inch. Just one inch, that's the top piece of your thumb. You know, we think of the Stone Age as like simplistic people. Their craniums were the same size as ours. They had exactly the same hopes, dreams, aspirations, core fundamental human nature feelings and drives and emotions as we had and cognitive abilities as we have. The only difference is, well, they start with a stone tablet. Now we start with an apple tablet, right? They're just the same as us. They're just much further down the tech tree. And I came here for the winter solstice for the first time last December. Up until then, I would have told you that I was an expert on Stonehenge. But actually, to see Stonehenge in use, the ritual and ceremony was different, but to be inside the circle with practicing pagans carrying out their winter solstice celebrations, and to see all the people around and the general atmosphere and the general mood, it was a place, it was, it was eye-opening to see it actually being used and to really feel what it was like. Not just to know the facts about it and the in research, but to really feel it in use. It's pretty special. If you're ever over in December, you know, book and come with us and I'll take you to the winter solstice here. We get here at five in the morning and uh, we watch the sunrise. Um, anyway, for me, the most amazing thing about the engineering, if you were to take a spirit level to those lintels, they're completely flat. The land drops away, so they have compensated for the topology of the land to keep the lintels completely flat. It's amazing. So be in awe of it, okay? And, you know, make a note to look out for the smaller blue stones. You can see some of them through the gaps of the bigger stones. We'll talk about the blue stone hench theory circles later. We'll talk about how they might have built it and why, uh, you know, uh, how they might have lifted the stones later as well. Come up with your own ideas. Have a think about how you might have done that uh, and just enjoy it. So that will be me done for presentation. I make it five minutes before 12. So you have exactly one hour from now which is more than enough time to go around and to get back up and to use the visitor center. Now, the one thing I will say, our one mission critical timing today is when we leave Bath. If you are in the gift shop and you're going, Johnny said to be back in three minutes time, but I haven't got my souvenir, I'm waiting in a line. If you're waiting in line in the gift shop, just be a few minutes late. Now, don't take the Mickey Bliss uh, and be like 10 minutes late. But if you, you know, if you, I'd rather that you had your souvenir, your memory of your time here, and were two or three minutes late, than were absolutely bang on the time and missed out on your souvenir. Because for most of you, this will be the only time you ever see this. So be in awe of it, appreciate it, take a moment to be consciously be in the moment as you walk around it. I'm gonna wait up at the corner there. So those of you who want team photos, catch me up at your own pace, okay? I'm gonna run up there now and that's where I'll get your team photos because that's where it's most complete. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> Brilliant, right, enjoy it. I'll see you guys. Any problems, give me a call, okay? I'm always on duty. That's just slipping from the mouth. This used to be a public road until 2013. Uh, when they closed the road, it was always amazing that it was just ruined by having a road right next to the house. Yeah. The wheels were full of the old road. Now I'm finding it. Yeah, I'll see you back up there. Yeah, if they tunnel through, you can dig a trench, an archaeological trench, anywhere here, and you find stuff. So putting that in a tunnel is absolutely sacrilegious. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right.
Het was weer vrij, voor deze coaches. Hoe zijn we zo voor de moeite, voor de meeuw, voor de noorse door de meer, dat je wist dat je nog niet was. Wat doet die, hè? Thank you. 
Mara Vesta Cortes So the Ciudad Yes, okay, but Como se dice rojas? Si Mas pequeñas, primero Como dos, tres mil años Antes de rojas mas grandes